Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us tonight. My name is Jen Boyd Martin, and I'm the Executive Director at 108 Contemporary. I'm pleased to introduce tonight's guest, John Chang. The exhibition Object Reimagination John Chang is up at 108 through March 20th. I'd like to give a special thanks to the sponsor of this exhibition, the Mervyn Bovaird Foundation. <clears throat> I'd also like to thank the 108 Contemporary Board of Directors for their continued support. And thank you to the amazing staff at 108 who make all of our programs possible. Chang was born and raised in Shanghai, China and is now based in Southern California. He received a BA from the School of Art and Design at the Shanghai Institute of Technology. He received his MFA in Visual Art from the College of Art and Design at Lesley University. His work has been widely exhibited, including the Alexander Bress Museum at Jacksonville University, Fresh Paint Art Gallery, and the Ormond Art Museum. Chang's East-West identity enriches his artistic practice, which emulates his life experience and the many places he's lived. Without further ado, John Chang. Hi. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for coming. So it's my turn. Can you hear me, everybody? Awesome. I'm going to start my slideshow. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I want to thank 108 Contemporary and uh, all the staff from 108. Uh, especially, I want to thank Jane, uh, invite me, and Julie, help me arrange my talk. It's my honor and the pressure to be here to present my work. And uh, I was born and raised uh, in Shanghai, the, the biggest city in China um, by I think a population. Um, I think it's about 26 million people with, uh, with a 5 million foreigners lives there and works. Um, that's the city, that's the night time. And that's, the, that's one of the buildings where I live around here uh, when I was a young. It's, all, uh, it's a very uh, unique district we call in, uh, the refugee, Jewish refugee district in Shanghai. And also the city was very modernized with all the gallery, museum, art district, and uh, a lot of artists. So it's very connected all over the world. There's just a few pieces. Uh, when I was back to um, 2008 and nine, yes, yeah, it's, it's been about over, 14 years around. That's a lot of an emerging artists, uh, contemporary artists, uh, they are doing a lot of uh, interesting work, unique work around the city and, and also other cities. Sculptures, computer on the ceilings. Uh, this is the most uh, famous artist uh, from China, it's an Ai Weiwei and I visit his studio. He's doing a lot of, uh, uh, bring a lot of uh, ancient uh, um, face uh, and uh, furniture and, uh, re and deconstruct and recombine as something, the object and do something and do something else. And his table, he cut the table corner and they put together. And the right side, just a chair. It's a very famous and a very expensive chair he made from marbles. The outside his studio. 
when I was young, I I trained I trained by my mom as a pianist, but uh, end up uh, I like to do all the drawings. I just love enjoying that moment. It's a quiet moment, so I can just sit there a long time to just practice my drawing before the art school. That's all uh, before undergrad, and the practice of all. <clears throat> That's kind of a, a relate to the the ink paintings. So we uh, it's combined with the Chinese ink painting with the uh, Western style. And I went to the art school in Shanghai, and I more focused on my calligraphy with more abstract, and also the uh, there's a kind of embed so with the um, the movement the the movement we call abstract expressionism movement into the paintings. All the calligraphy in the different form. It's more like a, a Chinese painting and, uh, with the calligraphy and with the abstraction. And uh, when I graduate from the college, I was thinking about uh, contemporary art. The only states that I want to go is uh, United States. It's the center of the contemporary art. So I moved to United States and uh, keep practicing my calligraphy, but embeds a lot of uh, American Western style. And that's just the part of the, the, the work that I'm showing around the country, around the United States. That's a, um, kind of a interesting, the black and white. It's black and white. It's not, it's not just the black and white. It's about day and night. It's about the positive and negative that's related to my cultural, the energy from negative to positive, how we're dealing our daily lives. My calligraphy with the, and also I play with the texture. The texture is from, um, from my daily works. Um, all the newspaper that I bring home, there's a lot of a uh, different language and uh, I cut and paste to the background and uh, I send it. And the next day I just regroup a new paper and send it. There is a revealing of the information that's from the paintings. It's kind of a, you, you writing your diary, you keep the, you know, the processing of your dailies. And you see through the life is, you know, the paintings coming through. And also the shape, that's a, a part of the correct, uh, the character that I just uh, cut the part and exaggerate the whole, enlarge all, the whole part of the character, just a part and the, paint that just the form, just a part of the character. That piece uh, I did, uh, I cut all the newspapers from, from local uh, different languages, from Japanese, Korean, English, and I collect them, I cut, it's about the story. It's about the story about the local people I call the name, it's about mewling story from people they are living here, they are working here. It's uh, this piece is in the in San Diego International Airport. Uh, the title is called Chaos. And you are coming from back and forth from the airport. You see all the, all the language that you didn't understand. It's kind of a, 
the voice, the, the voice is kind of a, become a noise. So you don't understand, but you hear, but it doesn't bother you. So people coming and go and to see all the, the language and people coming stop by to see all the languages they don't know. And they know a part, but they still don't know. So it's kind of a give a people, push back people away and attract people to, uh, to come to see the works. It's uh, sometimes a part of his language. And uh, at the same time, at the same time, I'm working my 2D painting, and I realize if I can bring those characters to alive to, to be a 3D dimension work, that would be so cool. So I kind of work with my um, uh, craftsman to, to create and uh, the carving most of about 4,000 characters. Uh, Every Chinese student, they have a memories about 4,000 characters in order to read and write. So I just pick those about 4,000 and uh, just cut, cut with the re recycled material and uh, carving those characters I bring home. I just recut, re-deconstruct those characters and I put together I range, you know, just like a puzzle, you range, it's kind of a life, you range your life and it's just the, the way that's a moment you think it's good, it's the way you like. So I kind of just, just play with those characters and the characters from, from your ceilings and the characters from your wall and the characters from your, painting and it's kind of a let people to see the work at, at the same time the work uh, that the characters are coming from the paintings and it give you some kind of a uh, the space the light the shadows so just a few and this one this is the same thing just a cutting into the uh, cut and uh, put into the box and uh, just uh, expanding your vocabulary. I, sp uh, I spent two years to create this piece and, uh, and it collected by the, the city of San Diego just recently. And a small piece that's the character it's also from the sky, it's also from the paintings. When the pandemic hit us, everything's changed, everything's stopped. Uh, I used to try to, uh, I have a, I have a, I had a studio outside my house and it, sh it was closed and I tried to, order some, some material online, the painting material online, but it's got delayed. I'm kind of just stay home and just wondering, frustrated what I'm gonna do and what I'm gonna do. And just to, just to think if I don't have those material and I don't have the, the guy work with me doing carving all the character and they just wander around the house and they just try to find something to do. And the first things I did was just uh, find all the wine bottle, the empty wine bottle. So I paint all the wine bottle at the time, but uh, there's not many. So I just, I just look at my basement. There's a lot of a shipping box. All the shipping box, you know, you, you, you order online, you got a lot of shipping box and uh, that's giving me the answer, say, why just do something? And the object, all the boxes, objects, all the information inside, outside, and that you can just uh, do something and do something else. So I kind of just uh, bring all the box to my studio and uh, 
keep the first uh, initial idea just uh, I just try to cut the, all the piece and the piece I can just make with my art together I want a text I want a texture from the front all the shipping box that's the one I told you I I collect all the wine bottle right that I I just the paint paint on the wine bottle with the clever feet and I cut all the shipping box and I ripped all the calligraphy, all that for just the general, you know, the 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 character, the radical Chinese character elements. So I paint, and uh, I want to make the I want to make the painting with the box with the texture. That's the texture I want. It's kind of a rough texture that texture represents my this moment my frustration and angers. So I am um, keep doing those kind of a, it's kind of a rough, it's, it's kind of a represent your life. And also the, the form, I kind of put the form, I cut a lot, I cut almost, you know, a lot of unfolding and the cutting all the boxes. Then, <clears throat> The idea for for the the, the human face is uh, it's a new uh, that uh, I was working with working with my friend doing photos uh, about you are you are not alone so we all stay home we try to find this object try to shooting some pictures uh, to connect with people. When we stay home, we are alone, but we are not alone. So the ideas is coming from my photos. I shoot a lot of pictures with my friend, do the project called Light, Space, and Shadows. And the idea is coming from the photo project. So we shoot a lot. We are little men. We stay home. We are watch outside the lights coming through my windows. We are lonely, but we are not. We have, a, we have a, our voice, artists have the voice to speak to the audience that we are not alone. So we, we shoot a lot pictures. Then I starting to cutting the shape of the face and the place to the floor. When the when when some hitting through <clears throat> my window and I I was I was so moved. That's what I like to do. That's what I want to my cardboard box to be a part of my moment. That moment when everything has happened at the same time. Pandemic quarantine and the struggle with the moment that find you want to express the event across the nation and uh, you know the human that moment so I start to cutting all my papers shipping box to create the final product So I will continue to do that. At the same time, I push the boundary, try to uh, move forward to bring those human face into my painting. The painting is also the shipping box. I want so they can merge together to find a new life. That's what, what I'm doing at this moment so the whole processing is kind of a it's kind of a story that inspired me to to push me to do more works like what i like to do that's all about it all the slides done <laughs> and i just want to thank you for coming to the show thank you 108 to show my works 
and uh, thanks Jane and thanks Julie. And it's my honor to share my work and my inspiration from the moment that we all live in. Thank you. Thank you so much, John. That was wonderful. Um, let's take some time to answer some questions. Um, if anyone has any questions, feel free to leave those in the chat. Let me see. I have a couple of questions myself. Um, <laughs> one being, so uh, what do you use to cut the cardboard? Is it just like a knife or the I cuts just, yeah. are amazing. So I just, just uh, <laughs> I just blade, <laughs> just regular blades and scissors. Uh, you must go through them. a lot of uh, oh. box cutters. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> about about two years to cut all the papers, all, all the box, unfolding, folding, and find the right one. You know, I love the texture, the shape, the, 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 the patterns. It's, it's kind of unique. You can, it, it's, a, it's a nature. That's what I like, like the culture and the nature merge together. Great. How long does it take? To do one? Mm -hmm. uh, I think you, you have to prepare all the shipping, shipping box and the cut in a certain size and the trace the, the shape uh, about half day for each. It's more than half day for each. And uh, yeah, it's a lot of a gluing, gluing them together, mm -hmm. and the cutting papers, cutting the shipping box, and the put together. Sometimes just messed up, and you recut. <laughs> yeah. Kind of. It could take um, a little bit longer. And one of the questions in the chat is why just silhouettes? Uh, I think it's easy to do. It's easy to do, and I don't have any tool to do the 3D works, I think. So I have a friend, he's doing, he's doing the 3D papers. It's kind of a, uh, about a few months just doing one piece. So I can't wait that long. I want to let people to see uh, the concept, the idea. It's easy to do. Everybody can do, you know, the object. So that's... That's the message to, you know, people can just stay home. They can, I, I also, you know, collecting all the shoes, the, the clothes, and also, I also can just bring those together as a piece. That's a piece represents your personal life, kind of a things. The next question is, do you have real people for your models for those faces? I have a, I have a, some friends. They give me some. I just sketch, you know, the easy sketch, and then I can just manipulate those image, the, the shapes. So I can just uh, that should be very easy to just create. Wonderful. So, <laughs> Next, it's kind of a Next cool. You, you are, I, I like the physicality. You, you, you work with your computer, and you get to you go back to your studio, and then you also do some physicality works, and you smell the paint. And, you know, you you doing your dirty works you know, to <laughs> hands on things. So. Uh, this next comment says that this was most impressive. Thank you. And what is your next experiments slash projects? Uh, probably uh, I'm gonna go back to my to my to my to my painting with the calligraphy, and I want to do this project. It's a special project for the moment that uh, it's all related to the events across the countries. I will move on and bring those idea to create more works with my characters, my calligraphy that's uh, embed to my history and also the history with both sides. I educate in the both side. Uh, I kind of uh, not belong to one. Uh, when I 
when I back to China, they say, oh, you are not, uh, you are not belong to, you are not original. You are not uh, really Chinese painting anymore, right? You are educated in the West. You kind of a, you know, hyper, you know what I mean? And uh, so you are not belong to really traditional Chinese artist, but I'm here and the people always identify you are Chinese American. You are not really, you know, I'm not belong to both, but I own the both. So I have the both culture. I can just express myself in the way that I think I can find the balance. I can fit that gap. And the people can, I think if people can understand. I use the Western tool to express my Chinese cultural identity and the history, kind of a. It, it, yeah. it, Merging them together. Yes, exactly. Next question says, how do you select your faces or does the carving come first and then the face emerges? Uh, the, the first, I did a lot of a black uh, black people's face that's because at that moment it happens. It's in my mind, it's always the, the black things and uh, the, the black movement. Uh, and after, after, I'm, after I'm doing, and there's uh, things coming out and the end time, this end time, that. It's all, I think it's all human. And we are humans suffer for that moment. It's it's not good. I can't I can't do anything but can speak loud to myself to show my works, so people can get what they can get the information that I want to send the message. So it's not the, I have to specify finding something. So I find that uh, pretty much everything that I can do in my, you know, uh, object that I can do. So it's kind of a fun to when, when you do it and you can't stop it, you just, you know, keep doing what you do. And that moment you stop, there are some things happen. You know, the new thing you have to just uh, go for it, move on, <laughs> next project. Thank you so much. Is there any other questions from the chat? For a second. I don't think so. Well, thank you so much, John. And thank you everyone who joined us. Thank you uh, everyone. Still, yeah, there's still plenty of time to see the exhibition is up through March 20th. And our open hours are Wednesday through Sunday, noon to five. And um, it's, it's just a really wonderful, beautiful exhibition. So I hope to see you all there soon. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you.